I'm Carrie McMahon with Pig Health Today, and I'm visiting with Sam Holtz, who is a veterinarian at Swine Vet Center in St. Peter, Minnesota. And we'll be discussing iron supplementation protocols and why those are important and, and what you see going into the future with those. Yeah, so I think as we're, we're all aware, you know, iron supplementation in, in growing pigs and piglets in, in specific has been you know, an age old practice since we brought pigs inside off of dirt. And so uh, historically it was kind of one of those things where 200 milligrams of iron between birth and processing was kind of the gold standard uh, protocol. And I think we've found over recent years that there's probably some fine tuning and um, given the advances in the industry and production that uh, we probably need to, to relook at those things to make sure we're optimizing that iron supplementation. So what are you thinking now for the new protocols or what kind of changes are you seeing? So it, it's a little variable by uh, system, but uh, one of the things we'll start with is we'll analyze uh, hemoglobin status in pigs prior to weaning. And so um, iron is important because um, it's needed for hemoglobin production. And so hemoglobin is a good measure of, you know, are we administering enough iron to piglets or not? And so that'll be the first part of the evaluation. Um, how is that done? And so uh, historically it would take like a, a, a blood sample from a piglet and we'd have to run it either in the lab or send it to the, the diagnostic lab and do a, a pack cell volume. But, uh, recently, there's been a there's a handheld uh, hemoglobin reader that's a HemaQ. So you just you just need a, a drop of blood, goes in a slide, and then goes in the HemaQ reader. And so it's actually one of the few diagnostic tests that we can do on farm. And how many pigs do you do, and how frequently? Typically, we'll we'll do 20 to 30 piglets uh, right before weaning. Um, sometimes we'll do it kind of before. You know, we make a, a protocol change and then after just to evaluate, so. Okay, so, and then after you do that? Say we go into a farm, we're evaluating uh, hemoglobin and pigs at weaning. Um, if we end up with a, um, you know, greater than 20 or 30 percent of pigs that are uh, iron deficient or anemic at weaning, then we'll go in, we'll decide, you know, do we need to increase the dose that we're giving? Um, sometimes we review injection technique with the staff to make sure that we're giving a quality dose and not getting um, iron running out of the injection site. Um, or we may decide to um, administer two doses of iron. Um, so um, it, it's a little dependent on the situation, but those are some of the, the options. What's the most common? I'd say we, we've seen um, Usually we've seen producers start or recommended an increase of that initial dose. So I mentioned um, 200 milligrams would be pretty common. We would have some um, farms doing 250 milligrams all the way up to 300 milligrams in a single injection. Usually we don't go more than 300 milligrams because then we start to flirt with uh, potential iron toxicity. So if we think that uh, might be needed, then we might uh, evaluate the need to, to do two doses. So. Oh, I was going to say, do you have you done two doses? Yeah, we, we, we have some, some clients that are doing it now and some more that are evaluating it, um, especially on those farms where we're having um, extended weaning age. You know, if we're getting out to 23, 24 days of wean age, we really tax that initial iron dose. And so um, if we've got that long a wean age, we probably can't get a high enough dose in them initially without some toxicity. So then in those situations, we have gone to either two 250 milligram doses or two 200 milligram doses. So in the pigs that you find, the wean pigs that are a little low, do you do anything with them? So pigs at weaning, if we would identify a group that had some significant anemia issues at weaning, um, we may go in and inject some iron um, shortly post weaning to try to catch them up and boost them. Just there's some been uh, data that shows that piglets that are anemic at weaning will actually um, grow slower throughout the nursery. So if it's a severe group, um, it, it, it does, uh, it is advantageous to go in and, and, and supplement that group. What did you see in these um, newborn pigs that made you decide to do this uh, um, testing? So I, mo most of the time when we're talking about um, iron deficiency, we're not going to really get into the clinical aspect. So oh. clinical iron deficiency where we'd have, you know, 
rough hair coats, really white pigs, um, even some uh, deformities and things like that. Usually we're not going to be that deficient. I think the main opportunity we have is kind of in the subclinical anemia. And so really we're not going to see it visually, but we did are able to identify it when we go in and, and analyze hemoglobin levels. Is there a difference in the kind of iron? So as, as far as uh, kinds of iron, uh, when we're talking about injectable iron, that's going to be an iron dextran. There's a few different companies that make iron products with some subtle differences in there, but basically it's, it's still iron dextran. The big difference is though between the injectable iron and the oral iron. And so um, there would have been a time maybe 5, 10, 15 years ago where there was concerns over needle sticks and things like that on sow farms that um, some farms tried to administer oral iron um, to, to piglets during lactation. And it, it really, um, it, it's not effective because one, we can't control the dose. You know, with an injection to a piglet, we know the dose that they're getting. Whereas if we're just supplying it orally, you know, in, in a pan or a trough and farrowing, um, it, it, it's not consistent. The other issue is that the, the, um, the immature gut of that young of a pig is really not able to absorb a sufficient amount of iron from when ingested orally at that age. How does that toxicity show? So typically you can have, uh, you might have induce some, some severe diarrhea. Um, excess iron can lead to uh, E. coli, excess E. coli growth in the small intestine. So sometimes you'll have um, a severe scour. Typically you don't see a lot of toxicity unless we've got something where the syringe was set, um, calibrated and correctly where we're administering too big of a dose. Um, so usually don't see two severe signs of toxicity. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sam, for visiting with us about some of the new techniques for administering iron to baby pigs. Appreciate it. Thanks, Karen. Thanks for having me.